check us out. On the road, and we're here in Deer Lodge uh, visiting with the Cutler family, a most remarkable family. Um, we're going to take a look inside, and and uh, Kelly is going to take us in to the theater and show us around. Thank you so much for accommodating us today. Thank you for all the work you guys have been doing. It's a marvelous place, and let's go in and take a look. So this is the theater. We moved to this location in... Uh, 2011, I'd say October, November is when we made the... And you guys all grew up performing and working in theater and your parents kind of... Yeah. Uh, brought you because they were passionate about the theater. Well, my mom was. She was always into theater and music and stuff like that. She took piano lessons growing up and dance. My dad, ironically, is actually was the football coach here yeah. in town for 35 years. So we all played football and then we also did theater on the side. and. Mm -hmm. We have a passion for both, which I don't sure. think you find that combination very often. <laughs> Not so. too much. Back in the day, we, we, uh, we actually did our first plays out of the old prison, okay? Uh, the territorial prison, there was a little, little stage there, and uh, Kelly came up with a wild idea. Dad, why don't we try to get this building? And have our own theater. And I thought, well, wow, have our own theater? Are you crazy? <laughs> yeah. It's never going to happen by my lifetime. <laughs> and so we, we purchased the building and we gutted it. And thanks to the local people here, uh, we're so blessed, not only with the talent of the people, but with also the uh, the laborers. We got all kinds of people that just pitch in and help and uh, love to do it. You guys at the time were performing in other theater groups. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, when I was a kid, they had the Neil and Karen Lewing come in, and they do shows here. Now, they run the Port Polson Theater, yeah. and uh, they did shows until 1997 or 8, and then they took off, and then the Deer Lodge Players was formed. We were part of them for a while, and then eventually we just branched out and said we want to call our own shots, we want to do our own thing, and um, yeah, that's kind of how it stuck. I guess we were just more passionate about it. Than... Well, that's very great. That's cool. It's so wonderful from t to me ob to observe from the outside how much the arts, in particular the theater, is about this community, is about pulling community together. And even when the material might have a lot of F-bombs in it, it has a moral that is about the community and uh, not necessarily about the making a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Theater itself doesn't make a ton of money. So um, this is the stage area here. You kind of. This is the stage, yeah. Um, I wanted the stage as big as humanly possible, so I don't even know what it, it measures or how it measures up to any other theater. But, you know, we kind of got what we wanted here. And the stage used to be this way. So if you're looking off that way where the, uh, that pole is, uh -huh. that used to be in the middle of our stage and uh -huh. all the seats were out here. And then so you turned the seating sideways in here. And how many seats do you have in here? Uh, I think there's 125. And then capacity, we, we figured out how to squeeze in about 140. You know, it's so beautiful because uh, there's not a bad seat in here, and the pitch that you guys have put in here is so nice. I mean, it's great. I sat around in different spots, and this is an extremely comfortable space. Wow, well, thank you. Yeah. And it's funny about the pitch, because when we first turned it this way, we built platforms, and uh, our steps were only five inches or so high. We did one show, and the crowd couldn't see, and we had all these problems. We had to completely redo the platforms oh. after one show. Well, it's really nice. It's very comfortable. And, you know, I, what, a lot of theaters around 500 seats or something. But oh, yeah. 125 is something that is probably perfect for Deer Lodge. Yeah, and we used to advertise um, Broadway up close because we really want to, people to know that that's kind of our shtick, where if you come to one of our shows, you're gonna see, you know, a good performance, but you're gonna be able to see facial expressions. Yeah. And we're, I mean, we come out right 
to the front row sometimes. Yeah. We use the audience, like in Shawshank Redemption, we use them as the jury and all this stuff. So, yeah, we, we really utilize um, breaking that fourth wall. Where? Where? Where no one can reach her. At Mr. Fogg's Asylum. Oh, Mr. Todd, she's in there with those screeching gibberish, gibbering maniacs. Madhouse. A madhouse. So you have, uh, you do calls in the community for actors to come in. Yep. And you have professional staff, too? Or? Um, no, I kind of say we're like a community semi-professional mix. Yeah. Because there are some actors that will bring in, like Marquise, for instance, you know. Yes, Mr. Todd. Well? There's Tawny, and there's Golden Saffron, there's Flaxen, and there's Blonde. Good. There's coarse and fine, there's straight and curly, there's, there's gray, there's, there's white, white, there's ash, there's curly, curly there's, there's corn, gray, there's white, yellow. There's it's amazing that we have this professional theater here in Deer Lodge, yeah. this, this small town. You wouldn't think that it'd be here. When you think of Deer Lodge, usually you think of like the prison museum. It is amazing how much talent that we actually do have in the town. I'm, I'm always astounded. I'm not originally from Deer Lodge. I uh, go place to place, theater to theater acting, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I've just been very fortunate to uh, be here during the summer theater seasons. I mean, since 2014 is when I started. Mm -hmm. Marquise was kind of, people overlooked him, and mm -hmm. we, we see the talent right away. Yeah, sure. And we, we just count our blessings that we had him for one year. Now, what's it been? Seven, eight years later, he's yeah. still with us. And yeah. you'll, well, if you see the play, you'll see why. Yeah, he's, sure. sure. He's a very talented person. Yeah. And he's, and he's from Great Falls, so he's a Montana person. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And it's also very cool talking about community. The first uh, summer I was here acting, I didn't really know anyone. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm like an honorary Deer Lodge. <laughs> right? And... Uh, in, in that way, it's been really cool just to get to know people from the town and see them like as audience members in the shows, and then they get like really curious, and then they come out for auditions, or sometimes like we need a certain person, and we get a call like, "Hey, um, <laughs> you doing anything this yeah. day, this day? I mean, You know, it'd be nice and easy. You can do it. You got this." Make sure you're talking loud, because like I was would come out and stand over here a couple of times last night and I could hear some of you guys. The local actors and stuff that do community shows and they're, they kind of come and go, do the shows that they want to do and there's not so many um, rules or whatever. I have them. to tell you that uh, observing the reading today and they were totally comfortable with me listening to them. Oh, cool. Uh, and it was uh, just inspiring. Like, I mean, it's a... It's really community based. Mm -hmm. And so you have all of these pieces of the puzzle to fit together. And uh, how is that negotiation to like, and who's the main vision, visionary in all of that? Uh, negotiation is a very nice word for it. Well, there, there's a lot of debate, a lot of dispute. And I, that's why I think we're successful because family. If, if you did that with anybody else, you know, friends, acquaintances, colleagues, it would probably fall apart because, yeah, we have some very intense, heated discussions. Casting is a perfect example. Do you have, uh, other than your family, are there friends that you grew up with here in Deer Lodge that come and see you perform? Like childhood friends? Uh, yeah, we have one that lives in Seattle. He, he comes yeah. he comes and shows up for our stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> our, uh, I would say I love our childhood friends. Most of them moved away, I would say. But we do have a couple here and there that we grew up with. But most of our childhood friends are actually in our production. They're, they're part of it. They're, they're helping in some way yeah. for the most part, I would say. I always say, like, how few people in this world get to choose a show a Broadway show or whatever show, you know, you can secure rights to and do on stage and uh, make it come alive. You know, a lot of people just dream of that, you know, listening to Broadway soundtracks in their car or whatever. And I, I think that, above all else, is the main goal of this place. Like, we, you know, we just want people to see the product, I guess. And, yeah, we do have a very strong community backing on this thing. Some of the 
funniest people, the most artistic people, uh, the some of the best actors I've met have been out of this town. Yeah. To the amount of work and discipline it takes oh, yeah. to be part of this. I mean, oh, yeah. it just blows my mind. It's great. It's a, certainly a testimony well, to how great the theater is. We have a, you know, we have a people that come in and do shows all year long and the community likes to say, well, we got such a talented community. Well, we do, but I think that every community is this talented. It's just that our people here have the opportunity mm -hmm. and they've had it for 18 years now. Uh, but you guys have really put on some uh, pretty uh, challenging plays over the years. A lot of Shakespeare. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And and it goes to uh, the talent we have here in our, our little community that, uh, and I'm talking not only actors, but musicians and things. We, every, we, we pride ourselves. Our musicals are not canned music. Someone has a passion about a show, let them do that show. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll do a good job. Instead, last year when we decided to do Footloose, I don't think any of us were super excited about Footloose per se. I, I, liked, I liked the music, I'd seen it, and we had a really good group of teenagers. That thing just took off like crazy. It was one of our top attended shows ever. <laughs> you know, I thought, you just don't know what's going to go over. And, right. And, right. and what I really like is those discussions we have as we're planning. And you find out these shows are way deeper than you originally thought. Mm -hmm. So this is the backstage area. All, that's our prop table for uh, at least the current show, Shawshank Redemption right there. This is Stewie. He plays Andy Dufresne, the lead in Shawshank. All right. He's intense, intently into his script, so let's not bother him. Okay. <laughs> and here's the other lead of Shawshank Redemption. Oh, no. Mark Sheezy. Did you give it a tour? I am giving it a tour. Sorry. Oh, 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 <laughs> this is the back backstage. Cast bathroom. Wow. So you have dressing rooms and very cool. Yeah, cast bathroom right here. Um, yeah, this has all been like repainted and re everything since the the leaks. So you can't really. I don't. You can yeah. kind of tell some bubbling there, but just up until maybe what six months ago, this place totally looked like a, a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> so we've managed to get it fixed. Well, you get, you have to be creative with your space usage. Yeah, your cost sure. and some this becomes a dressing room also for people that we we trust to come sure. in here and not mess with things. Usually, adults are in this room. Yeah. Because we just need to utilize every space yeah. we can. Yeah. Yeah. Fun, interesting fact: Cutlers are like a family of teachers. Um, at one point, Kelly taught the music program. Uh, Matt has subbed for a number of subjects. Um, Jerry Ann just retired from teaching. Uh, Al um, was a football coach for, I believe, 30 years. Yeah. yeah. And um, so... Well, we've had the good, good go. fortune <laughs> of uh, visiting with each of them mm -hmm. on this program. So yeah. I've learned a great deal, you know. Mm -hmm. so. Exactly. And uh, this, uh, you know, could you uh, maybe comment on this idea that we're trying to... that maybe some Montanans have this idea that uh, real art mm -hmm. is in New York or LA <laughs> and uh, you know we we've kind of grown up with that and uh, that it's far away and uh, I just treasure the fact that there are these local theaters and yeah. I, I don't know if you have insight into that or I think the thing about art is it can be made anywhere <laughs> at any time. I mean, we, we, we think back to like the old days. It's like art and like acting came from like that need, right? Of just like, let's put on a mask and entertain our, our group or people or tell a story. That's what it's all about. And you can tell a story wherever you're at in the world at any time. Um, and it doesn't have to be this huge... Uh, thousands of dollars thrown at it. Big spectacle. You can be very minimalistic. I've, I've seen shows, let's say, um, that there's no props, no set. It was up to you as the audience to have like 
it all in your head and these actors just like killing it. That's hopefully close to here with the property, you know, housing and everything. I know Missoula is tough, but Deer Lodge is equally as tough. You cannot buy anything right now. Um, we've tried like just any of these properties surrounding here to put up a, a warehouse, you know, to move all of our sets and painting and costumes, get it all out of here. So this is only a focus on the Perform actors. Yeah. yeah, the show we're on. Well, I'm certainly hope, hopeful that things can turn around and things will change in the valuation of properties too. Right. But uh, I don't know, you, you guys should certainly be congratulated on your stamina <laughs> and your, uh, you know, belief in what you're doing. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah we, uh, I say you got to love it. you got to have a passion for it. Because, again, it's not, you're not making hundreds of thousands of dollars off of it. It's, you know, sometimes feels like a job sometimes. But for the most part, I'll step away. Like in 2020, you know, we didn't do shows for however many months, a few months there. And that's the longest I haven't done a show in my life since I was 19 years old. Mm -hmm. So that's when it really hit me how much I love this because I was like, after a month or two, I was like, I am missing something. There yeah. is a giant yeah. void in my life, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it was because we weren't doing theater, so. You know, I, I, I often tell uh, my wife and kids, I, you know, I said, well, I'm always, I was always telling my students, my students and my ball players, make sure you give back because somebody gave to you. So this is Coach Cutler's way of yeah. giving back to the community. <laughs> and, 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 and what's really, Fun for us. Well, just last night, we had people from Great Falls, Bozeman, Missoula, Helena, Whitehall, Butte, Anaconda, all come into our little community. And, and it's, it's funny when they leave, they go, oh, I wish we had this in our town. You sure. Know? And I thought, well, wow, we were very, we're very fortunate. It's amazing when you look like where there's all this art popping up and you just have to like, just look at it or, or get the, the, what do you call it? Word of mouth. Yeah. So yeah, art goes on in spite of our best intentions. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you for giving us a tour of the theater. Thank you for your work. Thank you for your confidence in your own community and keeping arts alive in our world. Thank you so much, Kelly. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. Heading down the road, we'll be with you soon. Heading down the road with a big balloon Well, the medicine show will be with you very, very soon
professor knows what must be done Will the medicine show by now before the setting sun We got backbone in red, white and blue We got the stuff that's right for you All our stuff is brand spanking new 